much. Welcome to this free preview session uh, for the Leading Complexity program. And with us today, we have Michael uh, Vanstedt from the IDG. And uh, the reason why we are inviting you to this program is because we believe in the same thing. We need to grow people to be able to handle the complexity in the world. And maybe the difference could be, and we will probably hear more about that, that you are focusing on, on more on national level and we are more on corporate level, but uh, the ideas are about the same thing. And we are sharing some of the people. Uh, I know that Bob Keegan has been very involved in the IDGs, uh, while Bob Keegan is also involved in the leading complexity program. And um, the program is 13 uh, sessions, uh, one each week. It's uh, about one hour of like a masterclass or keynote speak, if you like, and then half an hour of Q&A, where you have the possibilities to uh, talk directly to those uh, very interesting people that spend their life about how to lead in complexity. And, and we try to find the mix where we have a lot of different angles or views of what complexity is and what it's needed to be able to lead in complexity. Um, if you're interested in this, please visit our website on leadingcomplexity.com and book your ticket. Uh, we are starting next week. But this, so this is a preview uh, to get everyone understanding what this kind of what it is. Handing over to Michael to present <laughs> Michael. Yes, so very welcome, Michael. Um, uh, Michael is the CEO of Inner Developmental Goals, the IDG. And I'm sure you will explain more about what IDG means. And he has a background as a lawyer, but I worked for over 10 years as a social entrepreneur. Uh, including uh, executive director for the Raoul Wallenberg Academy. Uh, he is also co-founder and part leader of the political party initiative. Very warm welcome. Thank you so much and wonderful to be here. Thank you for the invitation and so great to see so many, uh, well, few familiar faces and so many new faces. I mean, that's really what we want to achieve with the IDs to reach new people. So. I look forward to spend this just under one hour uh, together with you. And um, as Michael said, I have a professional background, but if I would just say something about myself and sort of my entry point into this topic. Uh, in my late 20s, uh, I had a bit of a personal crisis, which ultimately caused that shift from being a lawyer to a social entrepreneur. What happened was that my parents got divorced and one of my uh, best friends committed suicide. So I obviously felt very bad. I went to therapy and that really became my entry point into the world of personal development. It was obvious for me that I, uh, I had spent 16 years in school and university, but I had not gotten the tools to work with the challenges that life faces us with on an individual level or on a corporate level or on a societal level. So once I started to, to grasp that tools that really became a, a lifelong passion that I first worked with spreading to youth and, and now to, to everyone really. And that's what we're trying to do with the, with the inner development goals. And the inner development goals, you can't really talk about them without starting with the sustainable development goals. Uh, is there, how many here, if you just raise your hand, and I guess this is most relevant for the people who has uh, the camera on, how many here have heard about the inner development goals? So let's see. I can. So that is actually a great deal. Wow, that's amazing. All right, wonderful. And how many have heard about the sustainable development goals? And that's everyone. Yeah, I would expect nothing less of a group like this. So the inner development goals, it started, um, it started two years ago when the sustainable development goals were uh, five years old. And we saw uh, a few stakeholders saw that we're not making the progress that we should do. And why? We asked why. We have the resources we need. We have the uh, technology to a very large extent. So why are we not making the progress? And what we saw is that, well, <laughs> we're actually lacking us as individuals. We're lacking the motivation to, to make the progress that we need to do. 
we're lacking the skills often actually to make the the behavioral changes we need to make and to take the decisions we need to take and to get people on board on those decisions. And there the idea was born that can we then make the same journey as we have done with the, with the sustainable development goals to take something very, very complex as, I mean, with the sustainable development goals, the world's challenges and make it communicable and understandable and graspable. Uh, I think we all realize that the world is more complex than these 17 boxes. But we all agree that these 17 boxes is what we're going to work for, which is a, a you know, really achievement and a communica uh, communicable. It's been a huge success. Um, so can we then do the same journey with our inner lives, with the skills we have to develop to reach these goals? So from then the uh, sustainable development goals, was born the inner development goals. And we started with um, a question. And if I just tie this to, to facing complexity, because I think this is a, a crucial uh, link here. Uh, what, what we see with the sustainable development goals is that they are so-called adaptive challenges, uh, which means that we have to change in order to, to uh, reach them. If we just envision for a minute that is 2030 and we have reached the sustainable development goals. I think we all feel that we would also be other people. We would be different. But we're treating them as technical challenges, which we, we think that we can just solve with an app or with a tool or with a, with a method. And that's why we're failing. So this is what we want to, to address. And um, we started with a question. And as Einstein famously said, if you have um, one hour to solve a problem, uh, just you know, spend 55 minutes to make sure that you have the right um, problem formulation and then five minutes to solve the problem. So we spend months and months on just formulating the right question. And this is the question we came up with. And we bounced it with, a, uh, with the most bright people we know, Peter Singhi, Otto Sharma, uh, Amy Edmondson, uh, Jenny Garford Berger and so on. And the question is then this, what capabilities, qualities or skills do you believe? Oh, now I have to take it, this. OK, do you believe that we have to develop individually and collectively in order to get us uh, substantially closer to the sustainable development goals? And we spread these questions both to the researchers on this uh, very topic uh, and to uh, leaders who work with employee development, so business leaders, HR professionals, and trainers who train people in these skills. And we had over a thousand people involved. And we came up with, uh, with the first iteration of a framework of 23 skills that we see we have to, to develop. And I will get back to what these skills are. Um, but this became a starting point of a journey, and this is really a co-created journey with uh, starting with uh, three initi initiating partners, the New Division, which is the communication agency that did the, the SDGs. So they came up with these boxes, the 17 boxes. Then the app 29K, which is a free um, and open source platform for personal development. And then the Exhired Foundation, which has for 10 years gathered thought leaders on adult development. So they were initiating partners. And then if I would describe what are the IDGs, what do we do? I would say we combine research and communication. So very core in our work is to work very closely with academia. And we started, we are a small Swedish initiative. So we started with um, uh, our most renowned Swedish universities, Stockholm School of Economics, Karolinska University, Stockholm University, Lund University. And then uh, to our delight, Harvard came on board um, as our first foreign academic partner, and then Erasmus University and Paris University. And then our theory of change, and this is actually contrary to what you uh, uh, mentioned, Thomas, um, is, is that the, the ones that has resources to work with this are large scale organizations that can really work not just with the top leadership, but with everybody in the organization and its governments. So we have partnered up with some of the most uh, progressive organizations um, you know, in the world, really, uh, when it comes to, to 
employee development and you recognize many of these names, Spotify, IKEA, uh, Google, Ericsson and so on, who says that we will uh, not just develop our top leadership, but everybody, and we will also take this on and spread this to the world. So we're now talking to Apple uh, who said, you know, we would like to have this in every iPhone. Uh, it will take us one or two years to work the internal uh, bureaucracy, but you know, we will get there. Uh, and so on. So this is very, very exciting. And then to our uh, surprise and almost shock, uh, about a year ago we got a letter from the president of Costa Rica who said we would like to implement the inner development goals into policy um, across the, the public sector. So now we're working with Costa Rica to, to do this and we're partnering up with UNDP um, to see how can we spread this to other countries. The, uh, Rwanda probably being the second country to, to implement the, the inner development goals and I'll get back to this. But I have spoken a lot about the, the framework now. I think it's time to uh, dive into it and as we do this you can just reflect on these three questions. As I mentioned the skills, how strong are you? On this skill on a scale of one to five how strong is your group or organization and what methods do you know to develop these skills so just have these th questions in mind as i go through these these skills okay so here comes the the framework and it's really decades of research that's gone into this framework so you know i could give days of workshop of trainings on these skills and obviously we don't have days we have uh, about half an hour left so this will be a very very light uh, touch where we just get the feel for it um, and then you could you could uh, deep dive into it if you want to to know more so i will just mention these five dimension mention maybe one or two exercises on each dimension um, yeah and the five dimensions are being so that's the relationship to myself, it's thinking, which is very much going from linear thinking to uh, system thinking. It's relating, that's how we relate to the planet and to other people. It's collaborating, and then finally it's action. And um, um, if I start with being then, uh, you see it, it's four or five skills in each category. And in the being category, we have inner compass, we, uh, which is, you know, finding your own values and, and your core. We have integrity and authenticity, which is daring to stand up then for your values and your core. We have open learning mindset. Uh, here, Amy Edmondson famously have said that, that it's very hard to learn if you know already. So, you know, being humble and, and really see, okay, maybe I don't have the whole truth I have to learn. Spotify is best in class in, in teaching this. Um, Self-awareness, you mentioned Bob Keegan, he always talks about this is the ability to step a bit outside of yourself, to see yourself from, from the outside, not to be owned by your feelings, but, but to own your feelings. So uh, I would say all uh, therapy does this in, in one way or another, uh, where you can take one step outside of yourself and see yourself from the outside. And then finally, presence. When we're present, we take better decisions, we're more healthy, we're more happy. And if I would just give one example of an exercise here, I, I would say inner compass. What you can do is take a list of values and then uh, choose between five or nine values that are most important to you. That's about how many things we can hold in our head. Five to nine values. And then um, for each week, focus on one value that you will say, this value I will, I will um, focus on this week. Um, and then see how you can implement that in your everyday life. Very simple exercise, very powerful exercise. Even more powerful, of course, if you share with your team, what value am I focusing on? Then we have thinking. And as I mentioned here, it's going from linear thinking uh, to system thinking. So first we have critical thinking and often we are either too critical, often in academic circles that we cooperate with, they're very critical, or we're too naive. So you can just think, what, where am I on that scale and, and, and where do I need to, to go to be more balanced? Then complexity awareness. And this is the, actually the intelligence that is easiest for us to, to um, develop. 
Peter Senge has amazing uh, tools for that. Perspective skills, uh, which is three skills really. It is um, being able to understand different perspectives. It's the ability to seek various perspectives. And it's the ability to, co uh, to coordinate uh, perspectives. And the paradox there is if I'm very good at understanding different perspectives, I'm often quite bad at seeking different perspectives because I think I'm so good at it already. Then we have long-term orienting and visioning. And Otto Scharmer, who we work with, he says that this is probably the most important one uh, to reach the sustainable development goals. We make progress towards the SDGs until there is a crisis. Then we become uh, short-term oriented, we become in crisis mode we, uh, and and we lose track of the of the long term. And um, very good exercise there is to think about the seven generations. You know, in many uh, wisdom cultures, uh, there is there is someone speaking. Is that no? Um, there is. Um, uh, you think about if I take a decision, how will this impact uh, the society seven generations from now? So one exercise you can do is to imagine that your great, 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 great grandchild comes to you. And the great grandchild says, and you can do this in Paris, of course, that's much easier, says, wow, ancestor, it's such an honor and pleasure to meet you. I've heard that in your time, you had challenges with the environment, you had inequality, you had poverty, you had hunger. How was it to live in your time? And then you answer. And then the second question is, Ancestor, um, I've heard that you dealt with these challenges. I've heard it because it's been in our songs, it's been in our stories. How did you deal with them? And then you answer that question. It's a very simple yet very powerful exercise. Then we have relating. And this is uh, connecting uh, with, with others and caring for the world. Here we have uh, empathy and compassion. Jan Eliasson, the Swedish, famous Swedish diplomat, he, he always says that without passion, nothing happens, but without compassion, the wrong things happen. And this is what we really want to emphasize here in relating. So the first one is appreciation. And we are both happier and healthier and more caring when we appreciate things. So just writing down three things I am grateful for every day, super powerful. Then connectedness. Uh, we know that we are super interconnected. 7% of our bodies change every day. Our whole bodies change uh, every seventh year. So I know that the, the soil, the water, the air impacts me enormously. And there's now also uh, research in the, in the emerging field of quantum social change, seeing that the energy that I have transmits. So if I start a habit, whether it's a good habit like meditation or a bad habit like smoking, is 40% chance that the ones around me start with the same habit. And then we have humility, uh, empathy and compassion. And if I would give one example of an exercise here, it would be bubble hopping. Uh, so that means, and they use this as Stockholm School of Economics, it means that if I, I, I connect with someone that is not in my filter bubble, so if I'm a very progressive, maybe I seek out someone that's more conservative. If I'm more conservative, maybe I seek out someone who's an environmental activist or something like that. Someone who has different values than me. And I can write on my Facebook, you know, I would like to uh, meet someone who voted for Trump or I would like to meet someone who voted for a Green Party or whatever it is. Um, and then for two hours, uh, you just sit and try to listen and try to understand the people, the person you're talking to. And you can ask yourself, if I were that person, if I were in those circumstances and in those experiences, uh, would I have the same values? And the answer is, of course, yes, because you would be that person. And research shows that this, this changes our level of empathy um, over years. So these two hours is such a good investment. It changes your level of empathy for years. Then we have collaborating social skills where we start interacting with where we end and acting with others. Communication skills and um, the higher up we are as a leader, the more important it is to be very good at communicating. 
co-creation skills, uh, where we had a more uh, predictable society. It was easier with command and control, but as we um, navigate complexity more, we, um, we, we need to have more principles where people can be uh, free or agile indeed uh, to, to, um, to take their own decisions and to co-create more freely. Intercultural mindset and um, inclusive mindset and intercultural competence is interesting. Uh, the president of Stockholm School of Economics, he says that this is the most important skill for a future CFO. Um, we will have AI that can do the maths, but we need the CFO to be able to interact with different cultures to get as much data as possible uh, uh, accessible. Then we have trust. There is a huge Google study with Amy Edmondson who did this in 250 teams where they said what is the most uh, differentiating factor that shows if, it, if a team is successful or not. And it showed that trust is the most important factor. Teams with high trust just outperform. And a very simple exercise to do that um, is, is to work with the so-called uh, trust and openness spiral. The more open we are, the more trust we build in a team. So, uh, and a way to do that is to start every meeting with a check-in, to just say, you know, how am I right now? What am I feeling? What's going on in my life? And that over time builds trust. And lastly, mobilization skills. How do we get people on board? Simon Selniak has a great video, which starting on why, when we start on why, it gives a higher motivation to do this. And actually we have this experience with the IDTs as well. Uh, when um, when Tilia, sorry, when, when IKEA introduced this, they have always done leadership trainings. But when they said, you need to do this training, not just for yourself, not just for the company, but to create a sustainable world, it created a whole different motivation. Uh, and it became much more powerful, the trainings, trainings they did, and the results became much better. And there's a quite fun video with Alain de Botton in a TED talk called Atheism 2.0 and it says whatever you do look at how the church have done it because they have been the most successful in mobilizing people over centuries uh, so I can recommend that and then uh, our last dimension is acting uh, so here we have courage which is obviously daring to stand up for your inner compass uh, and interesting with courage is that it's not just yourself challenging yourself that's important but it's also enabling other to be courageous. If you as a leader uh, can say to your, to your team, you know, go out and dare things. I have your back if you fail. They will be able to be much more courageous. And then we have creativity. Uh, Dan Siegel uh, has done amazing research on creativity. And he also says that the safer we are, the more creative we dare to be. Optimism, we have, um, we have, um, an uh, interesting research on hospitals where they've gone into two sections in a hospital in one in one uh, or department in one department they said okay what are the problems here how can we work with them how can we improve them and in the other department they've gone in and said okay what are we really good at in this department and how can we do more of that and then after six months they followed up and just seen that the one that's focused on their strength and what they do well just outperform lastly perseverance this is the able to continue even when it's tough. Uh, again, inner compass helps a lot with, with perseverance. But the other aspect is grit. That, you know, even when it's tough, just dig your heels down and continue. And one exercise on acting and on courage is that if you have a problem, um, imagine that you have a visit from your future self, the, the self that is you know, even more the person you would like to be, uh, happier, healthier, more successful. You know, what courageous action would that person, that version of yourself, advise you to take? So, as you got an idea of, this is a lot of research here. Uh, this is just a glimpse and, and, um, and we could really uh, dig a lot deeper down. But uh, instead of me just talking, I thought I'll give you a few minutes just to, to share with each other. And, and the questions are... Uh, there we go. The questions are uh, related to the ones that I asked in the beginning. 
What skills are you strong with and where do you see room for improvement? Um, at what skills do you see in your group you're strong and where can you grow? What methods do you know to train these skills? I know you have all lots of experience and of course there's hundreds and, and thousands of methods out there. And uh, I think this is always good to make it a bit concrete. What is the next good step for you to, to train one or many of these IDGs, either for you or your organization? And we have a short time, you will have five minutes, so maybe just choose one question that you find especially uh, interesting and, and, and focus on that one. Oh, there we go. So, welcome back everyone. Uh, I realized I was very, very short for covering those questions. Um, but I, I hope you had good discussions. Um, anyway, would, we, would someone like to share something from their room? Can you just raise your hand? No, that's okay. All right. We can we have a, maybe a few minutes for Q&A in the end. I will just say a few few words uh, about where this is going then. So I shared sort of the background where we've come from. Uh, and we've developed in three phases. In the first phase, uh, we developed uh, the framework. The second phase, which we are in now, actually at the close end, we're developing a field kit with methods uh, that have proven successful to do this and there's thousands of methods out there we have just chosen a few that we see is promising and then we have an appendix with with hundreds of methods that come in 3000 people have participated in this and this will be launched actually next week so that's quite exciting and with that also idg.tools where we will gather the resources it'll be like a digital library with with the, the resources that are free and open source out there to train this skill so you can see okay i want to focus on thinking and i want to focus on my critical thinking and then see okay what resources are out there then after next week we enter phase three where we see how can we take this global and um, so we will do two big research studies one to to uh, we know we have a western bias in the in the framework so to do a second iteration of that where we really go out to 100 countries and have a thousand people in each country, so over 100,000 people, and really see what is all the wisdom out there to really do an in-depth study of, 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 of the second version of the framework. And with that also add uh, more methods to the, to the field kit. And the other study, and I guess there will be many studies like that, is to show the link between the IDGs and the SDGs, so that we can show that if you work on the IDGs, and um, uh, you will also work more effectively towards the SDGs. Um, and with that, I just welcome you to join this movement, join this um, group of, of universities, of um, companies. If you are in a large company, you think this is something for me, uh, I invite you to become um, a partner, um, really to, to support this movement, but also to, to work in your organization and spread this uh, beyond. And, and we have four meetings a year. Uh, and I think the big value for the, for the group is to really to meet each other and exchange ideas. But you will also get access to, to uh, uh, lectures, uh, to our summit, to the, to the gatherings that we have every month, to the thought leaders. So it's a, it's a great network and it's, it's very much appreciated. And we have uh, four levels there, starting from small to uh, on 5,000 euros a year to, to core partner on, on 50,000 euros a year. And then for everybody, whether you're a corporate partner or not, we have a few things coming up. We have our next IDG gathering with uh, uh, Otto Scharmer and Laurie, uh, Laurel Pallison on the UNDP, where they will talk how they're implementing the inner development goals in the IDGs, which is uh, quite exciting. They're really uh, going for it and, and they're doing quite in-depth work. So that will be quite hands-on on how you're realizing the inner development goals. And you see the, the link there in the bottom and maybe, uh, Michael, you can also post it in the chat. Um, and then um, we have a global uh, leadership uh, capacity building program. And, and um, that is really for leaders in the global south, uh, predominantly from Asia, um, uh, Africa and South America, where we have some white gaps. So we will do a program with 100 leaders from public sector, 
private sector, civil society, uh, and academia, uh, where we, I mean, they will deep dive in the framework, but they will also give input to the framework. Uh, so if you know anyone there, if you are a leader there, apply, the deadline is 21st of, of September, or if you know someone who you think this would be a great fit, you know, please spread the word. And the link is there as well, so please share it in the, in the chat. And with that, um, I, I thank you very much for, for your attention and your participation. If you want to contact me about corporate partnership or anything else, my email is in the bottom there and, and um, uh, we will share it in the chat as well. And of course, uh, you know, follow us on, on, on our homepage and on social media. We will post all the links in the chat as well. So I think that's becoming the close of our of our time together. But before we leave, do we have any questions or thoughts that someone? Uh, we have a couple of answer. questions oh, wonderful. Um, that we will uh, help you with. Um, before we do that, we will also send one link to the leading complexity program. If you want to have to hear more really good speakers just like michael and um okay let's see we have some questions here um the first question is doesn't professor keegan bob keegan urge us to deconstruct and move beyond our inner compass it's a stepping stone not the goal it's coming yeah from and oh, wow that's a great question uh thank you so much and um and I think here we see how, how these uh, skills interact and complement each other. I think any complex problem, you know, we have, we have one aspect uh, that contributes to, to 7%. Rarely an aspect contributes to more than 7%. 7, uh, 7 so whilst, whilst uh, Robert's levels of development, and I think you're referring to the sort of fifth level of development where we are self-transcendent and we go beyond ourselves, uh, yes, we, we can let go of our inner compass, but I think it's still important to have it and we can't go beyond it until we have realized it. Yeah. Sarah, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Yes, hi. Hi, Michael and hi, everyone. Uh, I have followed the uh, work that you are doing since uh, the framework was uh, first released, and I, I really believe in it. And uh, it was great to see the added uh, perspectives that you shared today with exercises and so on, uh, and uh, really exciting with the toolkit. One question that I have is linked to how I can engage and make an impact because I am self-employed and I'm working with developing organizations and individuals. Uh, and I see how you're working with larger companies, right? But I guess there are a lot of people like me who are working you know, on their own, but linked to organizations and who can actually make quite a big impact using this framework. So uh, what is your advice on how people like me can engage and, uh, and drive change together with you? Well, thank you. Thank you for that question. That's a great question. And also thank you for the work you're doing, which seems to be quite linked to, 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 to what we're trying to achieve. And the first, the first question is really, I mean, the, the framework is open source and free to use. So, so that's, you know, take it and run with it. And <laughs> that's good. That's good. And it's quite cool in this work that, you know, we get contacted by people who says, you know, I have developed an IDG game or I have, you know, developed this tool and, and we see how we can cooperate. So that, that, that's the first thing. Uh, and then we have various networks. So I mentioned the corporate partners. I mentioned the academic partners. I didn't mention the Catalyst Network, which is a network for network leaders. And so uh, Impact Hub, uh, Fuck Up Fridays, uh, NGOs, uh, they are in the network and they interact with each other. And the last aspect is, is the Hub Network, which is a self-organizing network where many people like yourself uh, who are trainers engage and they do uh, IDG action days uh, where they link the, 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 the IDGs to the SDGs. So, so that is, I think, my best answer to that. And we are getting better at it. I mean, that's also my promise that, you know, we should, we should yeah, really learn that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. We have another question from Marie-Ellen. Did yeah. I pronounce that correctly? 
It's Marilyn, but it was close. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Thank you so much. Um, so my question is similar to the question before because I'm a master's student at the moment and I'm studying impact entrepreneurship. And as a project, I would love to bring the IDGs to my university, but also to other universities. So how can I become co-creator or ambassador if I'm not a company that don't have 5,000 euros a year to be part of the network? Yeah, no, that's a, and that's great. And it, it's linked to the previous question. So that's really what the hub network does. Uh, where And we have now uh, 70 hubs around the world that says, you know, we want to work with the IDGs locally. Uh, and we organize four meetings a year for the hub network uh, and, and, and monthly meetings for the hub network leaders. And many uh, students like yourself have initiated activities on their universities. Um, and they organized also on the summit local activities in the university and, and, and local uh, meetups for the gatherings and, and so on. So uh, we have our, our hub coordinator Pontus and his contact details is on our, on our website. So, so reach out to him uh, and, and uh, yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Next question is coming from the chat. It's from Rafaela in Brazil. And it is the exercise examples were very interesting. Uh, will this be part of the IDG toolkit uh, to be launched next week? So the the I mean we chose the name uh, when we when we uh, when we were thinking about it and we felt toolkit is a bit uh, narrow, so we choose to do it field kit because I wouldn't call meditation uh, a tool. Uh, it, it's more of a method, and so it is a field kit. Um, it will comprise of 18 uh, uh, methods uh, or tools. Um, and it's really the ones that we feel we have a lot of consensus around, a lot of backing, whether it's, a, whether it's um, well, I see we have some uh, progressive ones like Nature Quest, and then there's some where it's very sound scientific uh, uh, backing like meditation. I, I will not, um, Re, re, mention all of them and unfortunately not all of the ones I mentioned will be in the in the field kit and and the field kit is also not not uh, aiming to have be an exhaustive list it is an example of of exercises and then and then we will have the appendix with hundreds of exercises so there of course we will mention also the ones that I that I mentioned yeah thank you very much um we can't find any more questions in the chat. It's a lot of good ideas, uh, suggestions, uh, links to different things. Um, I really recommend everyone to look into that. Uh, ah, now we got a question from, from Christopher. Great. Um, to what degree are the IDGs embraced globally? That's an interesting one. Yeah, great question. And. Uh, what we said in phase one or two was, as, okay, we are a small Scandinavian initiative, we will not go global. But what we what we noticed already in these two years that there is a global interest and demand in this. Uh, and of course, Costa Rica being the prime example of, of, of the first country that wanted to embrace this and also UNDP. Uh, we're really doing a global push now in phase three, so starting starting next week. So that's really when we're taking this global and we're also now talking to more global companies. Uh, Google being the first uh, really big uh, global company out there. But we're talking to, to several Novartis, uh, Apple, to mention a few. Um, and then and then, of course, this this uh, uh, global leadership program that we're doing um, with, with funding from from Templeton Foundation. Uh, and actually, the first lady of Rwanda is in Sweden now, uh, and she is very engaged in the IDGs. And, and the uh, former Minister of Health is the Swedish ambassador, and she's working very closely with us. Um, I would say that about 25 countries have shown interest in working with the IDGs. And as I mentioned, we have about 70 hubs around the world. Uh, but, but this is really the next step that we're going into uh, now. Uh, okay, um, we have a question from um, from uh, Michelle. Is there a place where some of the underlying research is shared? Um, yes, uh, all the research uh, is shared on our website under resources. 
So we did a big uh, report of the phase one where we see with what is the scientific backing for, for this framework. We will launch the other report now uh, next week when we launch the field kit and the scientific report there. So under innerdevelopmentgoals.org slash resources, you'll, you'll find all the, all the research. Yeah. So a lot of questions popping in now, oh my goodness. Yes, it's really interesting. Um, yeah. You mentioned Rwanda earlier. Uh, Anna, you had you asked for something more. Uh, I know you asked a question before Michael was talking about Rwanda. Or, uh, Anna, do you want to know more or did you get your answer? No, that's fine. Thank you. That's You're happy. Good. I, can just, I can just say something about Rwanda as well, because we will do an, an, a meeting with this global leadership program. We will do a meetup in Kigali uh, in Rwanda. And, and we will do the next IDG gathering uh, from Rwanda, if I know from the top of my head, it's 29th of November. Uh, so then we will interact more with, with, with the people uh, in Rwanda doing this work. And as I mentioned there, we're working with the, with the um, uh, former Minister of Health and, and the First Lady and hopefully the President soon. Okay, a uh, question from uh, Jochem. Um, can you speak to the different professions, uh, how they can be guided with custom tools to practically implement the IDGs? Um, yeah, what we, what we um, uh, see is that I, I think the biggest help what we can do and what we're trying to do more and more is to gather stories from companies, how they are working to spread them from countries to to spread them to other countries, from hubs to spread them to other hubs and to catalysts. Um, uh, I think what we're doing at the moment is very much to have them learn from each other and they are learning a lot from each other. Uh, as I mentioned, Spotify being best probably in the world on, on learning open learning mindset or IKEA, I would say, being the best company in the world of, of, of working with IDGs um, and also doing that link between the IDGs and the SDGs. Um, what else can I say? Uh, yeah, and, and, and of course, now that we're launching the field kit and this uh, IDG.tools uh, is also our, our attempt to make it more accessible and more not just abstract, but sort of hands-on how you can work with this. Yeah. I was thinking of tools like, uh, you know, for example, if you're a scientist, uh, how do I embed this even in a proposal that I define? How do I embed this in teamwork? Some things translate immediately and are clear, and some things probably hit on processes in big organizations where it's hard to implement. That's what's kind of the thinking. Um, yeah, and, and I guess it's very different in different professions. Yeah. Uh, like in academia, I, I think there's wealth of research that can be done. Yeah. Uh, and also also working internally at the university, how we can work with this. Um, with, with the corporates, I think we have a lot of experience on how they work with this. Um, so, so, so there, uh, I mean, it is a lot of leadership training practices that are available. Mm -hmm. I don't know if okay. that answers your questions. Yeah, it goes the direction. That's fine. Thanks a lot. And we, I mean, there's different groups that are formulating as well. I mean, there's a lot of organizations that want to work with youth and now we're doing, um, or they are meeting up really to exchange ideas on how they can work with youth. Okay, cool. Thank yeah. you. Okay, moving on. Matthew next. Is there a way we can assess where individuals are on the IDGs and track our change over time? That is a great question. Also something that we want to do um, on our sister organization 29K and 29K has about one and a half year worth of free training resources. So you can you know, spend years there um, uh, they have a self-assessment test. Uh, it is um, it is uh, simplified from a, I mean, it's based on research, but it's it's not perfect research. So it's not like our official official uh, uh, version, but you can log into 29K and, and do a test there and sort of get a score. Uh, and then you can track yourself over time as well. And also see there, you know, if I need to develop my uh, uh, self-awareness, you can see, okay, what have courses there you can work with. Uh, so that's the best thing there. That's also something we want to develop in the next two years. 
Okay, we have a question from Klaus. I'm wondering if cooperating with those big IT companies, especially Google, is counterproductive as we see how Google interfer interferes into our personal lives. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, I wouldn't say that Google is the worst in the class. Uh, I, I would say there, there's others uh, that that's worse. Um, I think my take on this uh, is that you know, we have we have to we are clearly in a in a, a shift in a transition from a, from a industrial society to a digital society, and and we uh, are trying or we have to be I think all of us the hospice for the old and the midwife for the new, um, so I think we have to you know engage with the society we are in, and see how can we how can we help that transition from a, from a, uh, say exploitive society to a, to a truly regenerative and sustainable society. Thank you. We have another one from Sonia. Are we also involving youth and youth organizations as well as young leaders? Um, so our our thought here uh, has been that there's a lot of resources going into to uh, youth development, and I think we have a big consensus in the world that you know we need education for youth obviously uh, there could be more of, of these tools um, and methods uh, available for youth as you know many of us experience as i experienced when i was in my 20s i had not been equipped with these tools however once we turn you know 25 we have left university there is very little available for us uh, yet we have so much research that shows that we do develop throughout the our lives. So we have put our emphasis on how can we provide more after we leave university. And there we think, you know, companies come in, there, there we think governors come in. And if I dream a little, I think it would be wonderful if, if a number of countries in a few years down the line said, we will have a, a minister for adult development because we think it's so crucial that we continue to develop um, throughout our lives. Having that said, there are is it, there is a huge interest from youth organizations to work with this uh, and and we're having a uh, or there is having it actually our, our, our is, we are not organizing but our sister organization is organizing a, a meetup with youth organizations in a few months where they will you know just exchange ideas on how they can work with this yeah okay we got another question uh, from uh, Lucia uh, do you see the possibility to collaborate with other organizations? such as uh, sociocracy or the international coaching federation yes <laughs> i mean and we are uh, um, uh, i think in our in our catalyst network i mean that's really uh, those type of organizations that we engage with that see we want to spread this in our network um, uh, international cooking federation um, uh why not i have to figure out the link but but uh i'm sure if 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 that is an idea uh um, that is that is uh, an opportunity as well um uh, sociocracy um well yes why i mean i i, I see also the way that sociocracy works and, and for those of you who are not available uh, familiar with sociocracy i would say it's it's a very um, hands-on organizational structure to work to enable co-creation. So I think that can foster co-creation. And then how you would implement that in the sociocratic, sociocratic organization, I, I think has to be invented by, by the organizations themselves. So I think it's time to thank you very much, Michael, for participating. And of course, everyone that has been participating, this is a very important topic that we need to spread. So just by participating, talking about it, this is very important. Uh, also very much thank you everyone who have asked question. I think that was uh, helping everyone to understand a little bit better what this is about. And uh, I see now that Jenny is posting some links again. Um, I hope that you are also posting the leading complexity program because that is also important. We need to spread those ideas even to uh, management within a lot of companies. 
So thanks so much, uh, Michael. I, I have been following a bit of the IDD work, and I see it getting more clear and more practical and more kind of also important, I think, going forward. And you had such a fantastic summit in May and all lots of great events. So if you haven't been to any of the inner development or goal, those events, I really recommend it. Thanks a lot again. Thank you so much. Lovely to join you at CRISP and lovely to see you all. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.